जय श्री माता जी गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन लेट्स बो डाउन टू श्री माता जी रेज अवर मदर कुंडलिनी एंड पुट बंधन श्री गणेश मंत्रा Let us listen to Shimata Ji's speech, which is continuation of yesterday's speech. We have to see God. We have to see our fulfillment. We have to relate. to that wholesomeness that is god the primordial being the whole of it this is what we have to see you are created for that if you study a little fetus in the womb of the mother you will be amazed that the whole of the fetus is looked after by the navel cord from the mother and though all the portions of the fetus are not yet fully developed as to get connected with the brain completely from the very beginning still through one channel it is fed looked after managed then the child is removed from the mother when the child is born and gradually 
all the sensations and coordinations of all these different sensory organs and uh, organs of motion and organs of automatic uh, functions are created gradually, very gradually as he starts growing. But once the connections are established, a human being starts acting. On his own, the whole body acts together. It knows when it is pinched here in the, in the finger, the whole body knows that you are pinched. The whole knows about what has happened. The whole connection is established. It's a living process, it's a growing process which works out. But with human beings, there's a very big problem. The biggest problem, I would say, that they are always identified with imperfections, with wrong ideas. And only in the human being these things happen. That's why one has to be careful. Dog can smell better than you do. And it knows what to eat, what not to eat. You don't know. You don't know what is a real guru and a dirty guru and a horrible guru and a vicious man. You cannot make up. Somebody runs out of the jail, he wears a dress, comes to England, I am the guru great, and thousands will be running out. But they don't know. And the more he has, the better it is. But there is a way. God has already placed that within yourself. For your growth He has placed within you, only He is testing your genuineness. But if you are so obstinate as to stick on to some misidentified nonsensical things, you cannot work it out. Be free from all these things. Open out yourself. You all have to be aware of the whole. You all have to get Self-Realization. Though by that God will feel His fulfillment of His creation, no doubt. And He has to do it. He will do it. But he'll have to work very hard. And still and still, if you do not accept the truth, then the truth will be expressed, no doubt. But then the untruth has to be destroyed. And at that time, those who are identified with untruth will be also destroyed. Before that, take heed to your business and know what we have to seek. We have to seek our wholesomeness, which we have partially expressed in our political and our economical and you can social uh, clubs. All this has to be integrated all the great religions which have been propounded in the growth of human beings, which have substantially helped in the growth of human beings, which are the substratum of their living, has to be integrated in that happen. For example, I mean, supposing a Hindu, then he says, Mother, how do you take talk of Christ? We don't believe in Christ. Now you are a very, very great person not to believe in Christ. Who are you not to believe in Christ? What do you think of yourself? What do you mean by saying that you don't believe in Christ? Do you know it is blasphemous to say such horrible things? about any great incarnation on this earth. 
There are some who say we do not believe in Moses or in Guru Nanaka or in Muhammad Sahib. Who are you? I don't believe. I don't believe. What is your belief? Or what on what it is based? Why do you say such things? What do you know about them? Only by going to churches or going going to these mosques or going to these synagogues, they are blind, making you blind. What have you achieved? But nothing but dark fanaticism. It's a disease. It's sickness. Just come in the kingdom of God, and you will see that they are all seated there on the dais. They are all together, and you, like fools, are fighting. Did they ever say that? For example, when Christ came, did he say that Moses was wrong? Did he say so? When Nanaka came, did he say that Muhammad was wrong? Did any one of these great saints say so? Then who are you to denounce them? This is one of the greatest hurdles of so-called seekers. Then they are identified with their gurus. I ask them one question: If you are so much identified with your gurus, go ahead with them. Why do you come to me? I come to you, mother, because I am suffering from asthma since I went to that guru. Then ask him to cure me. Why do you come to me? If your guru has given you whatever you wanted. Why should you come to me? If he is a real guru, I would see it written large on your face. I can make it out, and I'll worship that man who is a real guru. I'll go all out to meet such a person, and I'll regard him as the greatest blessing for me also. But there are very few, and all hidden in the Himalayas or some places from where they do not speak. Nobody listens to them. There are very few. One of them tried to go to America. Within five days, he was back in India. He wrote to me saying, "Mother, very difficult." Because you are identified with games, with playing games, you like people who play games with you. You do not like people who tell you the truth. This is it. You have to have it. But you must know is the concern. How can anybody who loves you can tell you something that is detrimental or injurious or absolutely dangerous for you? They will not tell you. Those who are fake will never tell you about anyone. They say, "Oh, everything is fine on the other side of the earth." Till somebody genuine comes up. They are not going to say a word about it. Take it from me. So, in your seeking, first of all, your misidentifications must drop off. We are so misidentified with so many things. Like people would say, "Why should we follow Christ? He was a Jew. I mean, he has to be born in some place, somewhere." And as it happens, you have to belong to some religion somewhere. You have to be born in England, or you have to be born in India, or maybe in Timbuktu. I mean, you have to be born in some place. So the rest of them say no, and those who live there also say he is no good because he was just born like us here. They want somebody to drop from heaven. It is so funny. So for us, those who are genuine seekers must open their minds fully. And if you want to waste your time, go ahead. You go ahead with your gurus. Go on wondering their marvels, giving them money, giving them your women, 
giving them your property, giving them everything that you have, getting sick, mad, ending up into lunatic asylum, I will not say, come my child, come to me. But even then, from the lunatic asylum also, if you realize your mistake and come, then God is the ocean of forgiveness. But from the very begin beginning, I have to warn you, all such people are wasting their time and my time. So please, all such people who are still very much misidentified, please do not trouble me with their arguments too. Because always I find that they are supposed to be true seekers like the lady yesterday and she started telling me, how have you read this book and have you read that book? I said, I would, but by reading that, I do not find anything in you. You have read them. What have you achieved? Have you achieved anything? Nothing. Have you seen this guru and that guru and that guru and that guru? I said, maybe. But what about you? What have you got? She has asthma. One eye is blown off. She cannot sit. She has got a rigid body because she says she has rheumatism. She is actually possessed. And there she is a seeker. And then she asked me a question, Mother, I am a seeker. And why should God be so unkind to me? You did not use your wisdom, my child. Even today, take heed to wisdom. And know that thy God loves you with all his heart, with all his soul, whether you love him or not. He has placed this seeking within you. He has placed all this instrument within you. He has placed all the things so beautifully that spontaneously it works in no time. But people are such. They come for realization and if I tell them, all right, you come and sit near me. No, I won't sit. You please take out your shoes. No, I won't take out my shoes. There are many like that. Even if you tell them, why don't you sit down with both the feet like this, because you'll be relaxed, you see. There are many more reasons for what I say, why I say. But still, no, why should I do? There are certain things which are very important for self-realization. If you want to have it, you better do that. The whole attitude should be of understanding that here you have to take from me something. It's a gift for you and there should be no obstinacy about taking this gift. I mean, that we do not do in normal courses. If there is a gift for us, then we do not become obstinate about it. Do we? Do the human beings become obstinate when there is a gift coming in? But only when it comes to God, they wouldn't even take out their shoes. It's such a great thing you are asking for, which is the flowering of your seeking from amoeba stage to human stage. In the human stage also thousands of years you have been seeking. And today when you are at the threshold of it, why are you obstinate? I say in Sahaja Yoga, 
you get your Self-realization. No more are taken. As a byproduct, you get your health all right. Of course, your material things also are all right. Many things improve as a blessing of Sahaja. But the real thing that happens to you is that you get Self-knowledge, you get Self-realization. That there is light enlightened within you and you start seeing yourself, your centers and the centers of others. Because you also get contacted with the whole, you get your whole family. This is what Sahaja Yoga has to offer to you and if you want to have that, please have it. The rest of it is just a byproduct. Because if there is a light, you do not falter, you walk straight. You don't say, my legs improved because there were lights. No, my eyesight improved because of my lights. Because there was no light, there was a problem. As soon as there is a light, everything becomes all right and you start understanding the whole. You know how the whole thing is and you start walking straight and you know where to sit and what is the chair and what is the person. This is what you are seeking, then you are a seeker and you are a true seeker and you are to be blessed and it's my job to see to it that you reach there. You get your own powers, not of your guru but of your own. And that you understand yourself, you get your self-knowledge and the knowledge of the whole. But if you are not that, my children, I am sorry, you are still a baby in the sea. You have to still grow more and grow more and then you come to me when you are grown enough. Otherwise it's a headache to work on a person like or to give them self-realization or anything whatsoever. They are using sometimes Sahaja Yoga for curing people. You do get cured, no doubt. Even cancer can be cured with Sahaja Yoga. It can be. It can only be cured by Sahaja Yoga. That's the point. But again, it will come back to you. We cannot promise, guarantee anything. Unless and until you rise in Sahaja Yoga and become the master of Sahaja Yoga, we cannot guarantee, you may get back the disease again. Why should God not have a sense of giving for something as you have? He loves you, no doubt. He wants to give you because He loves you. But if you are wayward and if you are prodigal by nature, why should He continue to give? is a simple question that you should ask yourself and then ask for realization. You get it. After getting it also, there is a period of doubts because first you get thoughtless awareness which is called as nirvichar samadhi. When we say awareness in the normal terminology, it means alertness to anything is awareness. But when we say samadhi, it means enlightened awareness. You get thoughtless enlightened awareness. And then you get doubtless enlightened awareness. The stage between the two in some people is so little that they just are there. I have some people here who just got it and are there. They don't pass through these two stages. But there are mediocres and there are also absolutely bullock cards, I would call them. They cannot move the time with the time of a jet. In these modern times, imagine a bullock cart being pulled by a jet. It's a big problem. But if you are of that caliber and that quality, you get both the stages just like that. There's no doubt after that. But then there are some who get into doubts. I don't know what they doubt here. 
they had the experience they feel the vibrations coming they see a uh, cool breeze blowing through them they see it is working on others they see the pulsation of the kundalini the rising of the kundalini they getting better in health and everything improving still they are doubting and wasting their time and everything is delayed their cure is delayed everything is delayed because of that all right so we have here jet planes we have here supersonics we have missiles and we have also bullet cars see it takes lot of things to make this world isn't it and so i take everything all right with all my love i engulf them but i would request you not to slow your progress like this what are you doubting is the question that i do not want anything if you are paying for something then you should doubt it you are not paying for anything what are you doubting what am i to gain from it but still so many of them sometimes come and tell me mother now we are doubting i say all right go on when your doubts will be over you do come and see that's how it is i would request you to try to tell your mind that you have done all kinds of things you have been to all sorts of gurus you have been to all sorts of nonsensical books and you have been to all kinds of doubts now settle down for a while settle down tell your mind not to mislead you and get it this is your own this is your own property this is your own right to be there so get it and if any doubts are coming tell them to wait for a while May God bless you all.
let's go down to shri mata ji raise our mother kundalini and put bandh
closing the stream so let us join tomorrow for collective morning meditation jai shri mata ji